We never want to be known as monsters. We're the kindly indies who are making games because we love it, and we intend to stay that way. In the span of a few days, nearly 50 employees were laid off their jobs without notice and potentially without severance pay. Rumors are surfacing that their boss was not present in their office during the entirety of August, was comically inept, and prone to threats as well as mood swings. What company would fire that many people, not only days before Canada's Thanksgiving, but this close to the holiday season? What company would seemingly go against such a simple and wholesome goal? Kindly Beast, the creators of Benny and Link Machine and Showdown Bandit. And their boss was Mike Mood. So then, how did this happen? Well, let's first begin with what we know is true and back up to May of 2019. The Kindly Beast team had already acquired Carmen Interactive, Mike's former place of employment, as well as its employees. Mike said they had nearly 85 employees working for them. It also seems that Mike was taking the brunt of the business work between toys and other merchandise. The Meatly has never given many details about the business work on his side, so by the looks of things, Mike is running the company while the Meatly is focused on making the games. This, if true, sounds like a terrible system to begin with. Given that I don't think either of them have had to manage so many people at once before, I can understand this being very stressful. Then come the first two weeks of August, and Mike's Instagram says he was at work for at least a few days, which would likely be to focus on finishing Showdown Bandit, because at this point, he likely knew that the game was struggling to be completed in time for the August 29th release date. That, or maybe he stopped posting after realizing this. Then, after being delayed, Showdown Bandit was finally released, and while there are no concrete numbers, using the Steam reviews as a comparison shows that Bendy has done almost as well in its 11th month as Showdown Bandit's first month of release. Even though as a new game, you'd expect there to be a greater feedback response if the audiences both games have are even remotely similar in size. But clearly compared to Bendy, it was a flop. Or at least probably not as big of a success as the developers may have hoped. Then, on October 11th, three days before Canada's Thanksgiving, around 50 Kindly Beast employees were fired. Most of the members of the Kindly Beast team I follow are all now looking for work, and the list of employees on the Kindly Beast website has been removed altogether. The closest confirmation I could find to it being 50 people who were fired was from GamesIndustry.biz, who says their sources confirm it to be barely under 50. Whether it's 50 people exactly, or just barely under that, it was clearly a lot of people laid off from the Kindly Beast team on very short notice. So, that's everything that can be confirmed. But then, what about the employees, the development of Showdown Bandit, and how the Meatly and Mike Mood went about letting all these people go? Before I get into that, I want to make something very clear. Everything I'm going to say here comes from anonymous employee reviews, as well as remarks from those who know more about the company who aren't directly involved with the situation. While it may be smart to wait for a more official response from the Kindly Beast team, I'm afraid that I would be waiting for a response that may never come, since it's clearly easier to not say a word and let this whole thing blow over. There's also a review of the company that's since been taken down, but because it was posted on October 8th, three days before the firings became well known, I believe that review was posted earlier than when the information became widespread. And while Glassdoor does have obvious flaws in its system, it's been nearly a week without anyone on the team directly denying any of these claims, and now support for them has come up in places. At worst, it would seem these reviews are a vocal minority of past employees, and at best they represent everyone who was fired. Simply put, I find it highly unlikely that this or any other post was made by someone on a smear campaign, but one could argue that they are quite spiteful towards the company, which could have prompted its deletion and it may have been revised and reposted as one of the five current reviews on the site. Though none of them have the same title of Software Developer, this one does hit similar beats and has the title of Senior Developer. Maybe it's the same person, or their stories just so happen to align. Regardless, I will be taking these accounts as true, though I'm openly skeptical about some of the more specific claims made. So let's start with Carmen Interactive. Three folks from Carmen who made it onto the Kindly Beast team as VPs were Mike Baker, Ram Kanda, and Joe Keon. While none of them are particularly active on social media, the latest post any of them have made about Kindly Beast was a retweet from Ram back on September 4th. After that, none of the posts are about Kindly Beast until all three of them began to retweet people wanting to help those from the Kindly Beast team who are now unemployed. Why does this matter? Well, because two of the reviews claim that just before Showdown Bandit's actual release, four VPs who were from Carmen Interactive were fired without any reason given. Both Roms and Mike's bio say that they're former VPs of Kindly Beast Studios. These people never even publicly said that they're looking for work or were fired, they simply just have it in their bio. So it seems likely that this could only be information known by someone who worked there, in case you were looking for any more confirmation that this isn't just a bunch of internet trolls. Now, the VPs were meant to manage people on a smaller scale, though sometimes their decisions were overruled, ignored, and even ridiculed. This also meant that any decisions made by them would leave the employees unsure of what to do, and therefore waiting to be given order by the board or the CEO. The CEO, clearly referring to Mike Mood, though who all were on the board, is never made clear. The VPs were apparently very capable and knowledgeable people who had the studio's best interest in mind, who were ignored, fired without cause, had the policies they put into place dismantled, and the stress caused by this was so bad that some employees went on medical leave. Clearly these were all good people, 
who were the victims of poor management. So then, what about Showdown Bandit? It would seem that this inability to work with clear direction would be the main cause of the delay, and eventually led Mike Moon and the Meatly to finish episode 1 on their own, two weeks before the intended launch, and they fired the VPs just before returning after being gone for five weeks. The deleted post claims that Mike wasn't even at the Kindly Beast office during August, which contradicts his post on Instagram, and returned in September after firing the VPs. The policies that the VPs had put into place were replaced with a mandate. Get it done, good enough. While the developers had already been encouraged to quote, seek lower quality ways of finishing their work, and attempts to innovate were seen as a problem, from that point onwards, developers would not be innovating or making games in an efficient or stable way anymore. Quote, as long as the game appears to work for the player, ship it. One could argue that this mentality is present in Showdown Bandit, as some of the more negative reviews state the game feels shallow in terms of gameplay, but no one is arguing whether or not the game is playable. This is a terrible thing to hear come from people who started out just wanting to make games. Imagine if every studio had this mentality. Some studios do, and that's why most people look to the indie scene, for a fresh look at new and innovating games. But an indie studio having this mentality contradicts that idea. So now let's fully talk about Mike Mood, the CEO of Kindly Beast. Some of the reviews claim that the CEO, Mike, or the owners, which would include Mike, has very little respect for employees. Quote, Developers were constantly grilled for attempting to write well-structured code, emphasized to the art and development teams that all tasks should be completed in under a day. He was unable to let go of production responsibilities, which may explain the firing of the VPs, since he wanted control and was just having to undo their decisions anyways. Mike would apparently have mood swings, leaving the employees without any sense of job security. The stress on a daily basis got to a point where employees were taking stress leave. Speaking of, after firing the VPs, Mike threatened to fire those in the office who needed time to process and adjust to the changes. Mike apparently was also unable to take feedback or ensure changes were made permanent, or ensure that they would even happen at all. After promising to be in the office every day, that promise fell flat pretty quick. This was one of a few lies made by Mike. Another was that everyone's jobs were secure. Quote, After personally announcing to the rest of the company that our jobs were safe, a mass firing took place just a few days later. There was no apology, no explanation, no accountability, and no show. The firing was discovered by some when personal accounts became locked, followed by a publicly posted note to abide by our contractual obligations. One of the closest confirmations I could find of these claims of Mike mistreating employees was from a game dev in the Ottawa area that said Mike is comically inept, ego-fueled, duplicitous, and dangerous. He also said that those fired are terrified of saying or doing anything that will set Mike and his lawyers off, which sounds plausible given the Kindly Beast's track record of taking down fan games, but could also be seen as a way to excuse why the number of these claims barely makes up one-tenth of those fired. Like I said, there's plenty of room for skepticism here. However, I believe that if there's any evidence to these claims, then this may be as close as it gets for the time being. Nearly 50 people, without warning, now jobless on Thanksgiving. Meanwhile, Mike is celebrating Thanksgiving at his home, and yet he's given those he fired nothing to be thankful for. There was never any reason given for the firing, though this hasn't stopped speculation. Some believe it was due to the poor sales of Showdown Bandit, while others think it was a massive purge that was meant to shrink the scale of the company down to a size that can be managed by one or two people. As for the Meatly, he's likely only mentioned in reference to the board and the owners. But he should be held just as accountable as Mike in regards to the mandate, the firing of the VPs, inability to let go of smaller responsibilities and take feedback, ignoring and ridiculing ideas, and lack of communication. Without a direct link beyond this, it's likely that the Meatly has been nearly passive in this whole situation, though I think that his passive role in this while having equal power makes him nearly just as responsible as Mike, since if he's not stopping it, he's enabling it. After all the news began to break out, GamesIndustry.biz managed to get in contact with Mike, and he had this to say, We are deeply saddened that Kindly Beast is in the unfortunate position of having to scale down our talented team. Our hearts go out to those who have been affected and we're providing our former staff members with career transition assistance at this difficult time. Also, our friends at Snowden Studios are having an open house this coming Tuesday, October 15th, which can assist in recruiting the available talent. All current projects will continue as planned to best serve our audience and fans. First off, this statement feels cold and insincere. Second, shouldn't you have sent a similar message when firing your employees instead of putting this in a news article? And lastly, your word on best serving your audience and fans means nothing if we thought the same thing with Showdown Bandit and this mandate was used to create it. While the Bendy and Showdown Bandit social media accounts have continued to post, not a word has come from the Meatly, Mike, or Bookpast. In fact, Mike has shut down his Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube channel. But I've recorded all three to some extent for the story of Bendy, so just because you're gone doesn't mean you're not documented. Though Pastel Calore, a character artist, and Matt Goals, a programmer, both of which have worked on Benny and are still working at Kindly Beast Studios, have both made their own statements. Matt said, quote, Okay, all I'll say is there's two sides to every story, and it's not my place to tell it. What I will say is I've been here from the start, and Kindly Beast is not the devil's anus. In fact, it's the best job I had. Just take what you hear with a grain of salt. 
Now back to Bendy. Pascal had similar sentiments. Quote, Extremely hard decisions had to be made and not one of you would have done differently. 90% of the people I read spewing lies weren't there the last eight months. You don't know what happened. It's not your place to know. I wish everyone all the best in their future projects. Now I've already covered why I believe the Glassdoor review should be taken as credible, but for both of these people to have known Mike longer, and probably better than most people who worked with him, and to say this without any supporting evidence means that their statements are equally as credible as those made on Glassdoor. Additionally, Kindly Beast is a company that is active on Twitter and Instagram, which are public forums, and so are its administrators. To fire 50 people and then say, it's none of your business why we did it, while also not directly denying any of the accusations made, makes those accusations seem all the more credible. I'd also like to point out that the PR manager for Kindly Beast is accusing people of sending various threats and harassing her, though there are those who are accusing her of exaggeration and witch hunting, since she's been banning folks on the Showdown Bandit Discord server. You should not harass people. You should not harass this woman. Though asking for answers from the PR manager makes sense, doing so repeatedly classifies as harassment. It's also clear that she's not going to give any answers, and maybe going so far as to lie in order to vilify those doing so. As of recording, this is all the information we have. I would also like to mention how awful part of the Bendy and Showdown fanbase are, because a bunch of people I've seen are willing to overlook this issue entirely just because Bendy is still happening. It's sickening that these people are willing to ignore someone doing terrible things because they believe the monster is basically holding the thing they like hostage. You can still like Bendy and Showdown Bandit and hate its creators. Though from this point onwards, if you buy any of their products, you are willingly financially supporting them. Honestly, I have a strong suspicion that any statement made by Kindly Beast directly will be either vague and try to hush everyone up, try and excuse away the things Mike did, which are scummy no matter what light you put them in, or they may even be selective in what they choose to deny. Now, to wrap this video up, I want to try and give it a bit more of a positive purpose. If you want to help out those who have been fired, see which ones are taking commissions. I know Risky Pixels was making emotes at one point, and Schmidt Times, the former QA lead, has a Patreon and YouTube channel. It's just as important to help those affected as it is to shun the monsters who caused this to happen. So then, where does that leave me? I've made two parts on what I intended to be a series on Bendy, but now all of this has come to light. Well, I've put hundreds of hours into playing Bendy, writing the script, and making those videos. I can't exactly take back the work that I've done, I doubt I can get a refund, and I think it's appropriate to finish what I started. The story of Bendy will be finished, but after this, the Kindly Beast team will have to make a statement addressing this, and then prove that they can make a good product before they can convince me that they are a company that isn't full of comically inept monsters. Otherwise, I refuse to financially support these developers for what they've done and what they've created. They were once people who I looked up to, but now I'm just disgusted at how they've treated their games, and more importantly, how they've treated the people who helped make those games.